Why are all these bison getting slaughtered? A problem is growing at the Grand Canyon. A growing herd of bison near the Grand Canyon is threatening some of its fragile ecosystem. Bison have been causing trouble for Grand Canyon Park officials. A herd of bison on the north rim of the canyon have caused damage to the park's resources. The bison population there continues to multiply. They also have a negative impact on the water quality on the north rim as well. They wallow around in the water and it creates a real E. coli problem because that water table feeds directly into Roaring Springs and that's the water source for uh, folks that are living, working, and also recreating at the north rim. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. It is so pretty right now and so green but the bison are doing great and uh we're getting close to calving season red dog season which will be super fun and exciting when that happens because that's uh that's one of our favorite times of the year most favorite times of the year is seeing those red dogs out here oh looky there one of the fan favorites came to say hi mr nosy right there himself dunbar it is the uh, inspector, AKA inspector, the boss down here with the original cross timbers herd. I've been getting a lot of emails um, the past week or so, and that's one specific article you may know about. Something I wanna talk to you about real quick. News article that's related to the Grand Canyon National Park. So I wanna kinda help you out with that topic today because I think it's important and I'm just a small bison owner, producer. And so, but one of the things that people are concerned about is why are they gonna shoot these animals? Here's a couple of things I want you guys to know about. One, think about this location. It's in Grand Canyon National Park. So you know that if you've ever been to Grand Canyon, you know what the landscape is like, you know what the topography is like. And, and when I say topography, I'm talking about what does the land actually physically look like? What are the features that are there? You can tell what this topography is. It's low, flat, some rolling hills. This is just Southern Oklahoma, right? But look at all this green. There is lots of grass. This is our hay lot right here where Maya and the ATV is. It's a lot of pretty green grass, okay? And I want you to think about this part of Arizona or this part of Grand Canyon National Park where these bison are located. It seems like they are very overpopulated. That's the number two reason. And, and the correlation here is if you've got overpopulated animals, bison in this case, in this national park, what they can really do, and cattle can do the same thing, they can do it worse than bison actually, is if you got that many animals and they're overgrazing an area that doesn't even produce enough grass as it is, because of the land there, so specifically for that location, if they don't produce enough forage for these animals, they're gonna starve to death. So before you start getting mad at the National Park Service, I really want you to think about that and, and I'm, not, I'm not for the National Park Service and what they're doing. I'm not against you that they shouldn't shoot them, okay? But here's a couple of things that I want you to think about though. Think about the roughage and think about the food source that they have in that area. You've got too many animals, they're running out of food, which means that these animals are gonna starve to death. And I've heard, even before this article came out, that those animals specifically in that park are malnutritioned and that they're not up to the potential where these bison can be. And I'm talking about full growth animals. Remember bison, it takes them about six years to fully mature. And I've heard that those bison are much smaller and thinner animals. That's what I've heard. I've been to the Grand Canyon. I've seen in the views and everything, but I don't know specifically where these bison are. But I've just been to the Grand Canyon I know that um, what the land is like. I understand it, and it, it's just, it's not like this. Considering that, what the land is and what it provides, and then number two, how many animals it actually has on I think they have over 600. They have too many bison at this national park, is my understanding. It seems like, just by reading the article, the same article that you've been reading, it seems to me like the park is actually 
put some research into this. It says that they've collared some of their animals. They've to see how big their herd actually is. They've actually relocated 88 animals um, in the past, in the most recent years. Um, and when they say relocation, they've got to go out into those areas, those remote areas, round up the bison. I don't even know if they have working pens or whatever. I don't know if they have any of that, but they've got to catch them and then put them in a trailer and then haul them. So they're part of the Intertribal Council, which means that they take animals and they will give them to certain Native American tribes, um, depending on whoever needs those animals or just to relocate. So they've put a lot of um, conservation effort into this specific national park by relocating those animals. And guys, if you ever watch my videos, my animals are pretty calm. However, imagine going out into the Grand Canyon National Park where of the North Rim specifically where this is located and catching these bison. That is a very difficult process. And so they, I think this park has actually put out some effort into this and they've helped relocate some of the animals. Now, I think they've realized how detrimental these bison are to the national park and what they're doing to the land. Because what happens is when you have too many of these animals, you can see the cattle from the neighbor, they're, they're hanging out too. If you've got too many animals, they can overgraze. And when you overgraze, you're gonna cause problems in the soil. And, 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 and when you do that, you're gonna really damage a lot of things. But if you do overgraze, you can really hurt the fundamentals of what mother nature provides and that's the soil you've got to have good soil here we, we don't have a problem because it hasn't been overgrazed we started rotational grazing here and in a national park that's not what you want you do not want overgrazing because the reason we have those national parks is to protect the land that's the most important part and yes, we want to protect those bison and we, we love those bison. We want to see them out there and, and just let them be in nature and doing their thing. We can't have that in a national park. We won't be able to have those animals if you don't have a good foundation, if you don't have good soil, and then you can't get those grasses that these animals love. So next thing, they're gonna take, I think 12 applicants total, and they're gonna be able to shoot these animals. And I know that doesn't seem very ethical to you. I know it seems a little harsh that they're gonna go out and actually shoot them. Um, here's the positive thing about that is, I don't know how many specific animals they're, they're, they're shooting, but I know they're just trying to really reduce that population. I do know, according to the article in the National Park Service, they are letting those applicants take at least one bison home. So they're not just shooting them and letting them lay out there. That meat and the, that source of all the essential things that a bison provides will be used and will be taken somewhere. So if you're one of the applicants that applies for that and gets to go in and shoot one of those bison uh, through that way of controlling their population, okay, you're doing the National Park Service a favor. And in return, they're gonna let you take home a bison. Hey guys, I just want to take some time to thank our sponsor today, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions can come together. It doesn't matter if you're dabbling, it doesn't matter if you're an expert, or you're just wanting to get into something new and you've got that creativity that you've been thinking about, it's been in your mind, something you've been really passionate about. There's thousands of classes that Skillshare offers to choose from. Many topics including illustration, design, photography, fine art, video production. There's thousands of classes that you can choose from. Skillshare classes include a combination a video lessons and a class project. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons and that you can pace yourself and fit your schedule. I was recently interested in a Skillshare class taught by Thomas Frank. It's called Productivity for Creatives. Build a system that brings out your best. My wife's always talking to me about being efficient. You guys know as my channel is growing, I'm always trying to improve. Whether it's editing my videos, I'm always trying to learn and get better. 
you yourself can be an inspired creator. This is created specifically for learning which means there's no ads and they're always launching new programs and new classes. So you can stay focused wherever your creativity takes you. With Skillshare, it's like having your own little creative community with people just like you with the same mindset and the same creativity, inspiration and ideas. For less than $10 a month, you can have a premium membership of Skillshare. The other cool part, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of a premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Kind of like mine. I hope you guys understand a little bit more. <laughs> I don't want to start any heated conversations or anything, but this is, this is nature and it's, it's just how it is. Unfortunately, when you got them in national parks like this, and that's Eleanor. So guys, I don't know if you're on board with me or what. I just know this from as a bison producer and I know this from a guy who's actually worked in the National Park Service. I can get both sides of it. I'm not jump I'm not supporting one or the other, but I want you to kind of think of the positive things about this and something else that you may not have ever realized, but one of the greatest national parks in the entire world, which is Yellowstone National Park, where some of the best conservation genetics lie in, in Yellowstone National Park of these bison uh, and, and a way that they culled their herd in case you didn't know they were shot and killed and I, I don't know what they did with a lot of their meat and I don't want to get into that too much because I really honestly don't know and, and that's a whole nother subject but the reason they slaughtered the animals at Yellowstone National Park was because of the disease called brucellosis. See brucellosis came from most of that disease was spread from elk up in that area. It's a pretty common disease up there. Uh, as far as bison go, they can spread it to cattle, but it really generates from elk. Uh, here we don't really don't have to worry about brucellosis, but that's one of the reasons they were culling so many bison at Yellowstone, as well as their population was growing. But now they do a lot of effort in saving and reducing the herd. They actually take them to another handling facility where they go through a quarantine process i think it's called fort peck doc parsons the guy i work with a lot he's actually been up there and helped them do a lot of work and so they're actually also part of the intertribal council and so they quarantine those animals and it takes a lot of time a lot of effort and money to quarantine those animals at yellowstone national park so that they get can give them to certain tribes um, all across the country couple other things I want to talk to you about is I want you to also think about a very important person in the bison industry and somebody who may have made has made a lot of strides for the bison industry in North America a guy by the name of Ted Turner I watched an interview on YouTube of Ted Turner um, what got him started and what really brought interest to bison and um, if you don't know the story about Ted Turner, you can, there's plenty of, of research out there on Ted Turner, but Ted Turner said meat, the meat is so wonderful on this animal, which I've talked about before. He said meat is the reason why this animal has been brought back. Um, yes, this animal has lots of great values and, and is, it's a special animal. It's our national mammal and we just love and appreciate seeing this animal. I love the culture of the Native Americans um, and, and how essential that this animal was to the Native Americans. And so I love all that history and culture of these animals and, and, and seeing them in Yellowstone and places like that. But meat is what Ted Turner uh, really focused in on is what brought these animals back. And I don't know if you know, but he owns a huge portion of the animals in a bison in North America. He has, I think, the largest bison um, herds herds in North America. And um, he has put a lot of contributions and time into the bison. But the reason the bison is occurring and has been brought back so well is because of the great source of meat it provides to so many people. With that being said, I know these people are gonna shoot some of these bison uh, to try to stable off the population at this 
Grand Canyon National Park. Uh, but they also get to keep the meat, like I said. So I want you to think about that. And um, you also can think about the Native Americans, guys. The Native Americans hunted and thrived on these animals for so many years. And they hunted them and, and used every part of the animal that they could and didn't waste anything. I know it seems harsh and it seems rough for these uh, animals to be shot that like that, um, but it's... It's been going on for a long time, and, and that's part of uh, stabling the population in a limited area. Guys, I wish I could, I wish I could go and rescue some of them, um, but I, I, that's not something that I can do, guys. I, uh, that's just part of the Intertribal Council and, and the park trying to put effort into getting some of those animals out, out of that park. They put the effort, the effort has been there. This is just a way that they're going to try to reduce the herd to try to save the land and the park, which is the most important thing is, which is why we have parks. It's to protect those natural resources and protect the land. Yes, it's awesome to have these animals, but you also got to take care of the land because if you don't have the land, you can't have these animals. And that seems like that's something going on at Grand Canyon National Park. I wish I could go rescue them and I know you want me to but we don't have the opportunity to do that. So thank you guys for watching. I know this is a tough subject and um, I'm not trying to jump on one side or the other. I just want you to understand a little bit more because you guys have reached out to me. I don't know everything there is to know about the bison world. I really don't. There's a lot of other guys out there um, that have had a lot of experience in legislation and, and with these sort of issues that have occurred over time. You guys reached out to me. These are my uh, ideas and, and my views of this. I've been on both sides of this. I've worked in the national park, which helped me get started on loving these animals. And also I've, I'm a rancher, I'm a bison rancher. So I can see both sides of it. And um, unfortunately, this is the situation that's going on in that Grand Canyon National Park. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Leave some comments below. Hit the like button if you guys like this video. And uh, subscribe to me if you if you uh, want to see more of this. And don't forget, here pretty soon, red dog season is right around the corner. And then there's a cow that I think is going to have calf soon. So, so pay very close attention to that because you never know when you're going to see the, uh, the first red dog of 2021. Thank you, guys.